Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Hey, Ashley. Welcome. Thank you, girl. I'm like, should I convert to locks? I really, you know, they start to grow me, but I be so decisive. Undecisive. I be wanting to change it up all the time. So I don't know. I don't know, but I'm liking that I don't have to really do anything. I'm gonna start in a few. Start in a few minutes. Hope you guys had a good day. <clears throat> I'm kind of tired today. You know, Mondays could feel like such a drag. Mondays could be something. Hey, Tiffany. You know, Monday, that's why I'm doing Emotion Monday. Because we, we need that boost. We need something to ponder on. We need, you know, something to focus on to get us through the rest of the week. <laughs> yes, today, I'm just tired. Usually, I take a nap during my lunch. I work from home, so usually I be on that couch knocked out, but I was watching TV. We're going to start in, I give it one more minute. We're going to go ahead and start. I don't like to tarry a long time. So you guys can enjoy the rest of your night. Start in a minute. And I can't wait to eat. What did what y'all eat today? What did y'all fix delicious today? I'm eating leftovers, but it's good leftovers. I made some uh, baked like turkey sausage spaghetti. Like they have like Italian sausage spaghetti. I mean Italian sausage turkey and i made it yesterday it was so good so i'm eating on that spaghetti and chili like always tastes good to me the next day i don't know if it's marinating everything together but it's always good for me the next day okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and get started welcome to emotion monday um i hope you guys are enjoying this fall day i know some people have some discrepancies about today but listen i've been waiting on today i got my sweatshirt on you know i couldn't wait to put it on i planned my outfit for today <laughs> you had pizza in a fruit cup but it was here ew 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 that's nasty <laughs> Yes, the ingredients be selling. So, you know, I enjoyed this fall day. I plant my fuzzy socks and my sweatshirts on today because I was ready to be comfortable. So, welcome you guys to Emotion Monday. Uh, for some that don't know, Emotion is standing for electronic. It's the E Monday. You know, it's just this. This is kind of like a rough day for a lot of people. So I always like to give something to ponder on, something that can get you through the week. Um, I mean, it can be motivational, <laughs> and, you know, but just something that, you know, a lot goes on over the weekend. So, you know, like I always often say, I prayed about what time and what day, you know, to continue to do this. And, you know, it just gave me Monday. And I'm like, usually I don't like Monday. So it's uncomfortable for me. So welcome, welcome, welcome all that are here um so i'm just gonna go ahead and get started usually the flow of how i do this now is that i'll write a blog and then i'll have a discussion about it you know it's always interesting you know to hear someone's thoughts behind you know what they write you know and um i just thought you know it, it keeps me along you know i loved when i read my book that you know i was able to minister in the middle of me reading it so I thought that was a good flow and plus it helps me keep up with writing. So, 
Guys, we're going to speak about prophecies. Uh, stewarding your prophecies. So I'm just going to warn y'all in advance. This is going to sound like a uh, teaching a little bit, but um, it's a purpose in it. Sometimes our frustrations and, uh, you know, maybe things that God has spoken of over our lives, the frustrations are there because we're not um, educated on some things. We're not uh, getting, you know, explanation and foundational, uh, reasons on why some things are, are the way that they are. So stewarding your prophecies. I don't know if anyone has read it yet. I just posted it like a half an hour ago. So, um, I started with, um, asking questions. What do you do with the word that has spoken over your life? Does it require you to make sure it happens? Does it cause you to make changes in your life? Or do you think it will happen no matter what? Let us dive deeper into the mystery of God's spoken word. Um, I believe indeed it is such a mystery, you know, God's spoken word, because, you know, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of, you know, feelings and emotions that come from, you know, the prophetic word or, you know, how we receive it. And everything else. So has anyone on here received a prophetic word? I'm going to tell you, show you and teach you how to steward, you know, that word. So you won't throw it in the sea in forgetfulness. <laughs> so how many has received a prophetic word? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure people will catch the replay later, but... You know, I have received, you know, tons, you know, and I kind of touched on it here um, and not from people. Interestingly enough, um, as my relationship uh, I have, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to tell you how to what to do with it, what to do with it when you receive it. I mean, it could be from a person, but really all in the all in all, um, if you have a relationship, you know, with Jesus, with God. You know, it's just, it goes so much deeper than just, you know, okay, this is going to happen, you know, and I'm going to go into that now. So I'm reading. Um, so there are so many opinions and questions and often blame when it comes to the prophetic. I won't go into too much of a teacher regarding the history and meaning. This blog are for those that know what a prophetic word is, but does not know exactly how to steward it, y'all. I couldn't really get into... I wasn't even going to get into that. I wasn't even going to do that to y'all to get into this history. And there, I've been writing a whole college paper. I'm not about to do that to y'all. So you might have to Google it this time. I'm not going, I'm not going to do it today. <laughs> you know, knowing what a prophetic word is, just know it's not the same as a psychic. Just know that it's not the same as a psychic. So once you know that, you know, it's not because it does so much things. Psychics only know the the surface of things, but there there's always a plan with God's word. Um, when you think about stewardship, the dictionary meaning is to manage or look after. I know the question that may be asked now at this point is I have to look after and manage a prophecy. Isn't it done once it's spoken or revealed? You know, I think a lot of people just think once it's spoken, it requires like none of your participation. As a matter of fact, I want to come and tell y'all, it's a spark of a, a, a of a uh like a conjunction of things. It's almost like it's the start of a train. It's the start of a process. So once you get a prophetic word. It's indeed a start of a process, no matter what it is. You know, a true prophetic word from God is initiation of a process. So the answers to the first question is yes. You do have to look after and manage what has been spoken over your life, you know, from God. You know, there's sometimes people do speak over your life. You have the choice and the power to not receive that word if you have discerned that it's not from God. Um, the answer to the second question, isn't it done once it's spoken or revealed? The answer is yes, but there are conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and get into that. 
So here's where it gets interesting. How do I steward a prophecy? The first and foremost thing, probably the most important thing in order to steward a prophecy is faith. You need faith to steward your prophecy. You have to first believe that God said it. I don't mean just say it out of your mouth, but believe it so in your heart. You have to, that's the first initiation thing that you have to do. It coming from God. Well, first of all, you need discernment <laughs> to know and to discern, you know, the attributes of it. You know, um, you know, it always, it will bring you back, you know, to the word of uh, God. It will bring you back to the Bible, but also, you know, you have to believe it. You know, sometimes prophecies don't come to pass or because of our unbelief. So, you know, that's why we, you know, it's in the Bible where help my unbelief. You know, we have to believe it. We have to have faith that God said it. That is the most important factor. And, you know, believe in your prophecy. Um, after Jesus was born, you know, so this is just what gave me the thought. You know, sometimes, see, this is the thing. When I'm doing this, you know, God will give me, you know, words. So before I even came up and started writing this blog or even had the title, I thought about Mary, you know, when Jesus was born. There are a couple of times in the book, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, that a uh, Gospel according to Luke, that it was said, you know, she said, I kept it in my heart. She kept it in her heart. You know, so I'm just wondering like what? So now God had finally told me, okay, she stewarded that prophecy. So, you know, so like I said, in order for you to steward your prophecy, you have to out of your, not out of your mouth, but believe the word in your heart. So I put after Jesus was born, there was a prophetic word spoken over his life. Like I said, here go a little bit of teaching and might seem boring, but it's relevant and is needed for the foundation of what I'm about to say. Uh, after Jesus was born, there were prophetic words spoken over his life. In Luke chapter 2, verses 16 through 19, there were shepherds that spoke what was told to them by the angels regarding Jesus. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After they had seen the child, they spread the message that had received they had received about him. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So I highlighted that. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. According to Ellicott's commentary, she could not as yet understand all that had been said and done, but she received it in faith and wait it till it should be made clear. That is another thing with receiving or having a prophetic word. It's not, more than likely, it's not a now word. A lot of times it's not a now word. You know, you have to receive it in faith and you have to wait. You know, in this day and age, in this society, we do not like to wait. We do not like to wait, which is our flesh. We do not like to wait. Uh, bear with me during this blog. Like I told y'all before, I'm definitely going somewhere. <laughs> I know there is a lot of teaching and proper verbiage, but it is important that I lay out the foundation. I am sorry. The good Lord gave me a teaching anointing. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to teach it how I... <laughs> <laughs> how he gives it to me and what he uses for me to explain it and to make it clear. Uh, the key to stewarding a prophecy is oftentimes found how others stewarded theirs in the Bible. Take the famous verse that we often say from the book of Habakkuk. So, you know, we say this all the time. And, you know, this scripture often pops up during a New Year sermon or even a vision board gathering party. Allow me to share the uh, message Bible version of the verse. And then God answered, write this, write what you see, write it out in big block letters so that can be read on the run. The vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow and coming, wait, it's on its way. It will come right on time. So, you know, um, this is coming from, like I said, I'm just getting into a little 
teaching, you know, the prophet Habakkuk, you know, and this is a prophet, you know, uh, the prophet Habakkuk was just, you know, so distraught and what was going on around him. You know, he's just like, God, where are you? You know, when you're going to come through, but you said, you know, so then God answered him and said, listen, you know, basically in a nutshell, because I'm not about to get into it all. I got this. But then Habakkuk pr proceeds to still complain, like, because he hasn't seen it yet. So let me go ahead and read. This is was after the prophet Habakkuk's much complaining and anguish over what was going on around him. Even though God has said it, there was still frustration that it had not happened yet in which God encouraged Habakkuk to write it down. So, here is where I jump in. So, this is a perfect spot, you know, for me to really just explain, you know, some things. So, um, you know, and let me go back. You know, he, you know, when Habakkuk, he has frustration. You know, God has spoken. You know, God literally spoke to his prophet Habakkuk and he still was like, listen, it's still so much going on. When are you going to bring justice? When are you going? When are we going to get out of this mess that we in? Not minding you that, you know, and not believing, not having faith that whatever God says is going to come to pass. So here's where I jump in, y'all. It is always a good idea to write your prophecies down. Anything that you get, and I'm not saying that you take everything that is said to you, you always bring it to God, but you have to write them down. You will not remember every word that was spoken over your life. You're not, you're not going to remember it all. As much as you convince yourself in saying that, I'm going to remember that, you're not going to remember it, especially in the midst of adversity, especially in the midst of confusion especially in a mess where you're frustrated, you will not remember, you know, what God has spoken. You're not going to remember. I'm letting you know that right now because you're so worried, so caught up in how you feel. Then you may look, you know, think you remember what the prophecy was said, but then all you remember was bits and pieces and you automatically say, well, God, this is not lining up. This is not what you said. In actuality, it is what you said. But if you, if you know, it is what he said. But if you stewarded it, if you actually wrote it down so you can go back to it and say, oh, I'm glad I wrote it down, you know, God, because I forgot about this part. So let me go on. Sometimes, a, and this is where I'm about to get into it. Sometimes a prophecy has so many layers so many layers that will take years to peel back even if us even if it is a sentence long so sometimes you know you may receive a prophetic word you know physically from a person's mouth or a dream or you know just in prayer time you might have heard God in a, st a still small voice and you wrote it down and then, you know, it just may seem like a simple sentence. Like, I'm going to take you to another level. I'm going to take you higher. Like, it's so many components in that sentence. So it's like, you know, for me, you know, now if, if God tells me something, whether it be, a, a, you know, from a person, I might read a scripture and I see it so many times and I'm like, okay, God, you're talking to me. You're telling me what's going on. At this point in my life, like, I cringe. I cringe, you know, when it comes to the word of God, I, you know, or what, what he tells me, prophecies. I cringe because I know there is a process attached to it. And sometimes I just get, like, weary. Um, you know, you want change. You want things to come to pass because simply for me, because I love God and I want to do his will. But sometimes you're like, God, do I have to go through another thing? You know, do I have, what else do I have to go through? So sometimes I cringe when I get something spoken over my life because I'm just like, God, okay, what else I got to get out? What else has to be worked out of me? Or, you know, because a lot of times, most of the times when you get a prophecy, the person 
that will receive it will not be the same. So when you get a prophecy, you will not be the same when you receive it. Your environment might not be the same when you receive it, when it comes to pass. You know, and not to say that, you know, and I'm, I'm speaking about prophetic words in a pot, you know, in a positive sense, like, um, but even if it's something that's negative, you know, or it seems negative, you know, to us, uh, yeah, you got to really just like take that still. Like, I think I revealed to you guys when I had read my book about, uh, receiving, you know, um, a, a bad prophecy. <laughs> I think I, uh, you know, let you guys know of how I, what I did when I received a bad prophecy. If I had not received that word, I, I wouldn't have wrote a book. And it wasn't a pleasing word. Like every prophetic word is not pleasing. And I think sometimes we say we put the prophetic word in such a fantasy light that we think, okay, you got prophesied over that you always going to get something good. Or something that sounds good, I should say. Because it's all good. It's coming from, you know, if it's coming from God and he's telling you it's good. Because you're going to be a better person when it's all said and done. Once it gets fulfilled. Um, and the process of it. Like I said, anytime you get something, it's a process. A process. So, you know, if I never got that word, it disturbed my spirit. But what did I do? I brought it to God. You have to bring every, you have to bring these words to God. You can't just take it and run. I think sometimes even when we get a good word, like a, a pleasing word, we just take it and we don't take it to God. You know, it could be about money. It could be about, you know, prosperity, you know, riches. We're going to get a million dollars. We still don't take that to God. Like, okay, God, what's this all about? Because like I said, to me, Anytime, any word that I get, it's like, it's a process. You know, something I got to go through. Uh, let me go back. Um, I have a couple of notebooks, post-its, even a vision board that portrays things that were spoken to me by God as a reminder that it will come to pass. It was also a reminder of the trials I would go through. The molding and the shaping that had to happen in order for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You do know that you will have to be processed for it. When you receive a word from God, you will have to be processed for it. I think sometimes we become so mesmerized at what has been spoken and do not realize sometimes God has to package uh, the spoken word in a pretty bow, depending on the present state of our spirits. Sometimes God has to present words in such a way because if he presented another way, we wouldn't receive it. You know, he, he's not going to tell us exactly what process we have to go through. He'll give it to us. And then when our spirits are ready, he'll unveil the steps that we have to take. God may have shown you a house, a car, a marriage. But do we even think about the process it would take to obtain those things or better yet, what that person would look like that would obtain the promises? Like, do we understand that? I think, you know, when somebody says, okay, you'll get a house, you'll get a car. Do you know what's so much entailed, you know, in that promise? You know, and I know y'all like, what's entailed? And God telling you, I'm telling me I'm getting a car. I'm getting married or, you know, I'm getting a house. Like what, I, you know, it seems plain and simple to me. It's some, a lot of times it's really not. Uh, yes, those things are material. But what if I said the only way that you would get the car is that you obeyed his voice and feeding the homeless and you entertained the angel unaware that wanted to give away a car to someone. The car was not the target, but the fact that you fed the homeless and brought people to Christ. Do you understand how, how this is going now, right? It's not, you know, it's not about us. You see, anything that is spoken will ultimately be for him. Yes, it will happen to us, but at the end of the day, it will forever and always be about him. The omnipresent Lord and Savior. And I have to get on here and say that, you know, like I'm not the type that get on here 
and say anything that's going to tickle and please anybody's flesh. Because I'm just in this, you know, area, I'm being so obedient. If anybody knew my personality and me, no, I like to have. I don't even like being, you know, this doesn't, this isn't anything that I would like to do. You know, well, because I love God so much and I love his people and want to see them prosper. You know, I get on here and deliver these messages and write these posts and you know so you know i just you know i just feel like it was just so on me for a long time to kind of just break this down for whoever will watch because i think sometimes you know especially in this time of pandemic we're losing we're forgetting what god is what god has said we're forgetting what he has spoken over our lives we are forgetting that we are on assignment we are forgetting the assignments. You know, we're so caught up in what's going on around us and, you know, uh, making sure we protect certain things. And God is just telling you at this time to just, you know, just step out. It's time to do the prompt, the will of God. It's time to do what you're supposed to do. And I think, you know, with there being, and I've said this before, with there being so many um, prophetic words going forth, that you know the whole purpose of a prophet was to edify and you know we're in a dark place we're in a dark place you know the united states the world we're in a really dark place right now so you know prophecies used to edify the people is to show you that you have a purpose you have an assignment you have a place in god you have something that's going to help people and that should make you feel good. Like we shouldn't make it all about us. If you're, if God gives you a word and it's going to help other people, that should make you feel good and uplift your spirit. Um, it often saddens me that we blame whose mouth a prophecy came out of and not take the word to God. Again, like I said, we have to take these words to God. And you have to remember that, you know, uh, who God uses, they are merely vessels. You know, like all of us, we all have our giftings, our callings, which come without repentance, which means God can give them and grant this, grant them to us without us doing anything special. But we're vessels. Like when you think about a vessel, it's just something to use. Like if you're drinking coffee out of a cup, you don't glorify the cup for carrying the coffee the the cup is doing <laughs> what it's supposed to do it's doing what it's designed to do you know you don't glorify the cup for carrying the coffee it's a vessel so how silly does it look that we get mad at the at the coffee i mean we get mad at the cup because the coffee is nasty Ain't that crazy? The, the cup can only do what it's going to do. <laughs> so again, they are merely vessels, messengers that only deliver the mail. We don't get mad at our local postmaster for delivering our bills. Why get frustrated with the prophet? You know, why get frustrated? I, I think, you know, and it's been said in the Bible, you know how... You know, people were so mad at Jesus for just stating in other prophets in the in the Bible. There were so many frustrations. There was so many so much anger towards the people in the Bible that was just delivering the mail. And you know, it it's it just I don't know. It's like sometimes, and I think that's the the frustration of when you have a relationship with God and you see these things and people don't see it. You know, people don't see that they do it. And, you know, so what can you do about it? You know, you pray. And I'm not saying only pray. I, I stopped saying that a long time ago. But just pray. Well, only pray because prayer is powerful. I don't minimize prayer at all. <laughs> A lot of times, you know, that's that's what you should be doing, first of all. Um, uh, mind you, God often uses scripture as well. A lot of the prophecies that I received never came from a natural person. It was either through a dream or scripture. 
It was through my relationship with God. With a strong relationship with God, you will also be able to discern a spoken word. That is your safety. Discernment is key in knowing what should be stewarded and what not to steward. Even so, we can't get frustrated if we are still alive on this earth and the prophecy has not come to pass. Do y'all know? You know, I think we bring that into perspective. If you're waiting on a prophecy, and like I said, for those that are coming in, I, I talked about uh, the prophet Habakkuk um, and the scripture that is often used about, you know, waiting for um uh, you know, waiting for a word to come to pass and, and him and God telling him to write it, you know, surely it's going to come to pass. And then Mary, you know, after Jesus was born and the shepherds coming and, and talking about Jesus, you know, he got prophesied a couple of times after that, but her holding that in her heart, you know, that's how you steward, you know, a spoken word from God or, you know, that's how you steward that. Uh, there are so many factors and I will still be sitting here. Wait, 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 wait. I skipped. Yeah, the sermon is your safety. Listen, in order for this to work, the sermon, you, you need discernment first and foremost when it comes to deciphering and receiving this a spoken word. You need discernment. I don't think we realize you need discernment. <laughs> and that's what you get from, you know, that's a gift of the whole, of fruit of the spirit. You will have discernment. And, and that's a fruit of you being in God's face. He going to show you what's not of him and what is him. And you being so close to God. I mean, you think about being so close to a person that you know, you know, you study them. So you know how they move. You know what their movements mean. You know how they smell. You know their eating habits. Like, you know them. So when you receive a word and it's not lining up to the attributes of God, like, mm, no, nah, this ain't. <laughs> and even so, like I said, you bring it to him. Uh, so discernment is key in knowing what should be stewarded and not to steward. Even so, we can't get frustrated if we are still on this earth and prophecy has not come to pass. If you are still alive, you can't say something is a false prophecy. If you're still alive, you can't say something is a false prophecy. Um, unless, you know, you read the word, God tells you that is false. That's the only way you'll know if something is false. If God tells you, I did not say that. This did not come from me. And you still don't get mad. Because, you know, either people have off days, people get mad. You still don't get mad. You know, you just... Hey, you, you you eat the meat and spit out the bones. Like you, br you brush it off. There's no need to get mad. Uh, there are so many factors and I will be sitting here writing a dissertation. There's so many factors in this whole thing. Like this thing could be longer. Um, in perspective, the spoken word should edify. So this should uplift you. This should push you. The word should edify God's people. Edify to go out and do his works with gladness and thanksgiving. God is not a genie. We have to know that. And I know, you know, what I'm teaching tonight and what I'm saying tonight, it is not popular, but it is needed. It is needed tonight. God is not a genie. And is not obligated to give us anything. Do y'all know God don't have to give us a thing? He don't have to give us a thing. We are not entitled to a prosperous prophetic word. We are not entitled for him to... To, to to have, you know, just something. We don't, we, you know, sometimes I think we become entitled. The prophetic word is used to push and assist us to complete an assignment. It is not used to parade in front of others or used to boast nor satisfy a fleshly, fleshly desire. It is used to glorify God with what you will become for it. It is used to glorify God with what you will become for the kingdom. Say la. And that is it in a nutshell. You know, when you get a word and, and everything, it's not it's not nothing to boast, to parade. You know, simply is to glorify God with what you'll become for the kingdom. Like I said, it sets a process. It sets a process. 
So that was pretty much what I had. I'm glad I'm on time tonight. You know, I, I try, I really try to only stay on for like a half an hour, like 30 minutes or however long, but more, more than likely I target, I aim for 30 minutes. So I hope whoever's on here, whoever, I wish I would brought some water. I'm thirsty now. Uh, whoever is on here, whoever will get the replay, you know, just make sure that you're stewarding, you know, what God is saying. I can tell you guys, just even as a, a transparency, um, you know, I wish you guys could see the notebooks and stuff that I have. Like I have a dream book. I have, you know, just prophecies that I got from reading the Bible where it just keeps repeating and God keeps telling me. And so I write it down like, okay, God, this is what you're telling me. Um, and then there's from written, you know, stuff that people have said. Like for some reason, I'm so glad that mine were caught on tape or you know, on a video, I will record them or I, and then I will write down what they said. And, you know, even the biggest prophecies that I've gotten, you know, they're still unfolding. And I received them about like eight years ago. It was just so much in the word, you know, and it's because, and then when I received the word, I'm definitely not a, the same person as it's unfolding. I'm definitely not the same person. And that's the thing. You know, it takes time. Sometimes if we're wondering why prophecy hasn't come to pass, it's because we still have to go through the process. You know, like marriage is a big thing. I think some people get irritated if they say they're, they're going to get married and it doesn't happen. You know, in the present tense, it doesn't happen. But we don't sit and think like, okay, God, what are attributes that I need to work on? You know, do I need to work on my patience? Do I need to work on my attitude? You know, um, how am I stewarding my time? Am I, uh, you know, am I selfish? You know, these are things that are needed. And we have to know, you know, just going in the depths of a marriage. You know, that's a God institution. That is a godly place. So why wouldn't you consult God regarding that if he said he wants to give this to you and it's not going to be just for you? You know, he might be trying to attach you to a kingdom partner where you're going to do just great exploits for the kingdom of God. You're going to bring so many souls to God, you know, and that's the purpose, you know. So sometimes we have to understand why are we getting mad? Is it because of a fleshly desire or are we trying to prove a point, you know? We have to know, yep, because it's in God's time, not our time. We have to respect God's time. We have to have faith in God's time. Like I said before last week, we can't just sit and get mad and say, well, God, you know, about time, when you know, when it does come to pass, it's going to be the correct time. We don't say, God, I'm mad because you didn't do it sooner. I ain't never heard nobody say that. If somebody said that... I don't know. I pray for him, but I've never heard nobody, you know, get mad because God took too long. You know, because it was already worked in since the foundation of the earth, what will happen. The thing is, <clears throat> sometimes what pushes or prolongs it is because we're not ready for it sometimes. So we have to prepare, you know. So that's one thing that I want to encourage and one thing I want to tell you guys. I don't know who do, who actually does this. But anything that is spoken, that you discern that is from God, you know, for your life, write it down. Buy you a book, a notebook from the Dollar Tree. Buy, you know, buy you a simple notebook. It don't have to be so fancy. Buy you a notebook or at one time I had a jar and I will put, you know, write down on little pieces of paper and I will put my prophecies in the jar. You know, that's one thing that I, I did, you know, and, and from time to time, don't just write it down and, and put it somewhere and don't ever look at it. Go over your prophecies. Go over because right now, like I will tell you guys at the leading of God this season, he has had me studying, you know, my prophecies. He has had me study them and I am so shocked to see how many, you know, are starting to come to pass. Yup, Walmart has them for 50 cents. You know, you, you don't have to. I mean, 
just so you can be reminded and so you won't have to and see this is where the the chasing of a prophetic word comes from because we don't steward them right we don't steward what's already been said because we may have may have didn't believe it or you know we didn't receive it at the time but then you know we keep you know maybe chasing you know or going after and keep a uh, one in the word when it had already been said and spoken over your life we just didn't steward it well so that's all i wanted to tell you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed this teaching this encouragement you know so any the next word that you get a word that you have gotten like i said i was so look you know blessed to have a uh ones that were spoken over my life, you know, um, on video where I could keep them and store them. And then another thing, you know, before I slip my man, it's about to slip my man. Lord, Holy Ghost, help me. <laughs> Holy Ghost, help me. It's about to slip my mind. It slipped my mind. Oh, oh Lord, bring it back to remembrance. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So, even when it comes to that, if you keep getting the same prophecy, it's an urgency. That's like a siren blaring. You know, if you keep getting the same word, you keep getting that same word, you keep getting that same word, it's like a clarion call. It's a urgency in the spirit. For you to, to tap into that word that's been spoken. You keep getting it. You keep getting it. Like, I mean, it's not has to be anything bad, like, or anything like that's uh correcting. Like, oh, get your life together, get your life together. That that's important too. But if God keeps telling you, you know, you're gonna be a millionaire, you're gonna be a millionaire, or you're gonna get a house, you're gonna get a house, you're gonna get a house, you keep hearing, you keep hearing it. Yes. It does speak about the proximity of it almost coming to pass, but it also speak on, you know, maybe God is trying to pull you closer so you can seek him for steps on how to be in place. You know, sometimes you'll keep getting it and God is really telling you, you're not in place. You keep getting it because you're not in place. I have this for you, but you're not in place. You know, so it's so many factors, like I said. Um, but most importantly, you just have to consult with God. You have to talk to him. And that's, to me, the best part of receiving words. I get to speak to God. I get to speak to, you know, my father. I get to, we have a discussion. This starts an ongoing discussion when he speaks to you like that and what he wants to do with you. And, you know, so, and, you know, and for his people, most importantly. So I just want to thank you guys for joining in. Uh, we are under seven o'clock. So I'm happy because I'm hungry and I'm about to go eat. So <laughs> thank you guys for joining in for Emotion Monday. And I will see you all next week. And also, um, I don't have this. See, I'm, I'm shameless plug, you know, but this is one of my favorite sweatshirts. This is my poetic worship shirts. Um, you know, I'm praying on something for this, you know, later on. But, you know, I was going to wear my other sweatshirt. I have Jesus 24-7. But I do have apparel. I do have, you know, mask and everything that you can buy is on the pfme.com under shop. So you can go there and see what else I have. You know, this is sweatshirt season. So you can go ahead and get yours. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. Have a good day.